Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a space shooter game with Swift and Xcode. Now I actually made this game myself, this is the, what the whole project is. I've made this game and I put it on the App Store and I'm going to show you how to make it with Swift and Xcode. I originally made it about two years ago using Game Salad and haven't updated it since, so it's very bad. <laughs> I'm just going to warn you that right now. But either way, I'm going to show you how to make that game, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is what we're going to accomplish in this tutorial. I just have my main player right here and out from him is spawning, spawning a bunch of bullets at a certain interval. And then we have enemies spawning randomly off of the X axis right from the Y value up here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first thing we need to do is open up Pixelmator, which is my given, which is my choice editor. So I go file, new, and I'm going to create a custom, custom size of a 60 by 80 pixels, so 60 by 80 pixels image, and this is going to be our player. Now I'm just gonna option, zoom in, I'm gonna make this fairly quick and it's just gonna be a nice triangle as our player. So now I'm gonna go down here to my objects and just click and drag a triangle on there. Of course, if you are using whatever editing software you use, I use Pixelmator, but you can use whatever you want just the same basic concept applied throughout. So I just have my player like so, and I'm going to change the color of them to just a nice blue color. And I'm also wanting to make this an 8-bit game, so I can go convert to pixels, and I'm just going to add a pixelate onto it. That looks pretty good to me. So now if we take this, we can erase the white background, and then you want to export as a PNG. And this will assure that the white there's no white background in it is because if you were to do a JPEG, it would actually keep a white background. So we need to just say call this player. Uh, this will be our player Galaga export. And now we need to go file new. Or actually we don't need a new one yet. This will our enemy will actually be around the same size as this guy, so we can just add another triangle. Flip them upside down, if I can get a hold of them. Flip them upside down, and we're just going to add a, a nice orange to him, or her, <laughs> whatever gender it is. So now we have this orange one right here, and we can make this a bit bigger. And then we're also going to pixelate this one, so right click, convert to pixels, and pixelate. So there we have it, there is our enemy. I don't know, I did a very rough draft. We're gonna export this as our PNG and this will be our enemy for Galaga. And now lastly, we need to create our spike or our bullet. So we need to say file, new, and this is just going to be a very small 20 by 40 image, pixels per image. Click okay, and now we just have this very small bullet. Let's zoom in real quick add another triangle and we're just gonna make this a nice purple first thing that came to mind all right so we have our bullet right here and we can go file export and we're gonna export this as a PNG again and this is going to be our bullet Galaga and of course you can name these whatever you want. I will also have these all linked on my website if you want to go download them. But now I have the player, enemy, and Galaga. So let's go ahead, go to Xcode, and we want to create a new Xcode project. This is going to be our game. So application, and this is going to be a game. Click next. Our language will be set to Swift, our devices will be set to iPhone, and our game technology will be set to Sprite Kit, not Scene Kit as that's 3D, OpenGL, ES, we're not gonna mess with that either, and Metal, that's also 3D. Now go up here to your product name, and we're just gonna type in Galaga 2, or Galaga 1, and then create, and now let's make this a bit bigger. And let's head into our game scene.swift. Now, if you were to build and run this right now, you would actually have a pre built application running, built and running for you. I'm sure you all have seen this before, but when you click on the screen, you get, you'll have a hello world, and then you also have all of these spaceships created at the location of your touch. Now, we need to actually just go into our game scene.swift, first end our program. We need to go into our game scene.swift and erase everything inside of our did move to view, as this is basically the view did load, so when the view loads, something's going to happen. 
And then in our touches began, we want to erase, erase everything except for the let location touch dot location in node. We just want to keep everything else. So there you have it. And now let's go ahead up here and we're going to create our first sprite, which is going to be our player. So we can say var player equals sk sprite node. Open, open parentheses, and this is going to be a in an image, an image named, and then our image name. We just need to click and drag all three of our images into the supporting files, or you can click and drag them anywhere really, but into the supporting files. And now we have these three images. And now, if we just take this image, we want the player Galaga. So if we go into game scene.swift, go to the image named. We just want to say open quotation mark close quotation mark, and say player galaga dot png now down here in the did move to view we want to add this player onto our scene so you just say self dot add child and this is going to be our player now we also want to change the aspects of our player so we actually build him and run him in the exact location that we want him to be at so we can say player dot location i'm sorry dot po position will be equal to cg point make and this will be our x and y value and with dealing with uh, the game scene.sks, which is different than our main.storyboard. Ju uh, just dealing differently with these, we would need to go to our game, game scene.swift, and inside of the CG point, we need to say our x will be self.size.width divided by 2. So this is going to be our x value, and our y value will be equal to our self.size, our self.size.width height height divided by five just kind of pulling that one out of my head but this was basically going to keep it down below where it, you would typically be playing at so now if we were to build and run this we have our person being built and ran and he's down here now of course if you want to move him down you can say divided by six or so on and so forth so if we build and run that again it'll be he will be moved down more Anyway, uh, we can. I'm just going to move them back to divided by five, and inside of touches began, we want to move our player dot position equal to wherever we touched. So in order to do this, you just say player dot position is equal to, and this will be our location dot x. Now I forgot to mention that this should be player dot position dot y. I mean dot x. So now. Uh, where I'm getting this location.x is from right up here, where we, if you didn't delete it, this is uh, good because now we have our x location automatically being put inside of this location file. And we, anywhere we click, he's going to move to that x location. And also, I can click up here and he's still going to stay in that same spot. Now we can go back to here, and one thing you'll notice is I can click, but I can't move the image around, which is bad. So we need to go down here, and we want to say begin, I'm sorry, touches, touches moved. And we want to basically just copy and paste this exact piece of code inside of our touches moved. So we can build and run this. And as you will see, we have our player and you can touch and move him around and now we want to actually spawn some bullets from our players guns per se so we can say function so f-u-n-c and we're going to type in spawn our our bullet so spawn bullets and then open parentheses close parentheses open cur curly mark close curly bracket and inside of these spawn bullets, we want to create a bullet object. So we need to do basically what exactly what we did right up here, where we said var player equals sk no, sprite node. We need to say var our bullet. So we're going to call this a bullet equals an sk sprite node. And this is going to be an image named. And this will be equal to the image named our bullet galaga.png. So bullet galaga dot png and also make sure that it's capitalized the same way and because it's not going to work now down here we want to say bullet dot z position if you don't know anything about 3d programming basically it's just 
putting it behind an object or in front of an object depending on its Z position. So this uh, player sprite node is automatically built at, at a Z position of zero. Now if we move this behind zero, we can automatically make the bullet seem like it's coming from behind the enemy from our player ship. So we can say bullet.z position equals negative five. And this is going to give it the illusion that it's right behind it was built inside of our ship. Now inside of the spawn bullets, we also want to say bullet dot position will be equal to our CG point make and our point make we're going to make this point the same as our player dot position dot x and our player dot position dot y and now that we have those done we can build and run actually we can't build and run this chest yet because if we were to build and run nothing would happen so down here we want to say self dot add child and our, this will be our the same as our our bullet that we created right up here. So we're adding this child onto our scene. Now up here in our did move to view, we also want to create a timer. So this timer will just say, uh, we're gonna say var timer is equal to ns timer dot scheduled timer with time interval. And this time interval will be equal to zero point, we'll say two. And our invocation will be, actually we, we don't want this one. We want to say schedule timer with interval, open curly bracket, okay, interval, open curly bracket. And we want this one that says TI target selector. We don't want the button above that. So in this one, our time interval will be 0 0.2. Our target will be self, meaning that we're going to be affecting the scene itself. And then our selector, we're going to say selector, and basically what the selector is meaning is what is it going to call every 0.2 seconds? What function is it going to call every 0.2 seconds? Now you might think that this is a good idea to just take this spawn bullets and put it right inside of our selector. It looks like it's working fine, but it never does. I don't understand why it doesn't give any errors. But in here you will have the user info. We'll put this as nil and our repeats as true. Now if you were to build and run this right now, you wouldn't get any errors, but you would be... There, there's some problems. Actually, you would get errors. I was wrong. Now let's go back to our game scene.swift and head on to over to our spawn bullets. It's not telling us that we have an error. That's what I mainly meant. It's not telling us that we have an error, but there is an error. So we need to go down here to our selector and just erase the parentheses that surround our spawn bullets and say open, open quotation mark, close quotation mark before the spawn bullet so it just highlights it in red. And now if we were to build and run this, we will have a scheduled timer of running every 0.2 seconds, building and running our bullets at the point of our player dot position. Now we actually need to make this bullet fly forward. So it's actually going to be able to hit some of the objects instead of just laying down where it normally was. So in, sort of, in order to do this, inside of our spawn bullets, we want to create an action. So let's say let action equal sk action dot move to y so we're going to move to a y value or a different y position for our bullet and the y position that we want it to go to is self dot position i'm sorry self dot size dot height in our duration we'll just make this very quick so we're going to make it go at a speed of 0 0.0.6 0 .6. sounds good and then down here, uh, oh, there's actually an error wrong with this, but I'll show you exactly how to fix that in just a minute. But press enter, and below the action, we want to add this action actually to our bullet, so it moved to this y value with the duration of 0.6. So in order to do this, you just say enemy, I mean, sorry, bullet, I'm getting mixed up here, bullet dot run action, and this will be sk action dot repeat action forever and the action is the action that we just created. So we're going to repeat this action that we just created like so. So now if we want to build and run this, we will have a our bullets flying up. But now as you can see, if you look at our nodes right down here, we are getting this just piling up with the amount of nodes that we have. And we don't want this to happen either. So in order to do this, there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, my favorite way is actually just getting it to go off the scene. So in order to do this, you just set the duration. We'll set it to a 1.0. So it's one second. And then we're going to add 
30 pixels to onto our scene like so. And now this is actually because it's going out of the scene. That's very nice about game scene.swift or about this sprite kit. As soon as it goes out of the scene, it actually destroys the node itself. So now we actually have a our bullets flying and we can move our player all around. So yeah, and now let's create our enemies. So in order to create some enemies, we need to create a new function. I'm gonna end this process real quick. So we need to say function spawn enemies. Open parentheses, close parentheses, open quotation, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of spawn enemies, we just say var enemy equals sk sprite node. And this is going to be image named again, and we're going to just fill in our image, and this is going to be enemy Galaga, as we have done before in the past, dot png. So the trick with our enemy is we want to take our enemy and we want to spawn it at different x values along this top y axis. So in order to do this, you just need to go down here and say our minimum, this is going to be our minimum value. So actually we need to say var minimum value is equal to self is equal to self dot size dot width. So we're taking the screen size and then we're going to divide this by eight or divided by eight, like so. And then our maximum value, we just need to say var max value will be equal to self dot size dot width. And then we're going to subtract 20 from that width so it actually doesn't go off the scene. This will be helpful for later on. And then down here, we need to take our var and this will be basically the difference or our main spawning point or our spawn point will be equal to our maximum value. So we're taking the difference, and we just say maximum value minus the minimum value. And we're also going to convert this to a UI int. So UI int 32, like so. The main purpose of the UI in 32 is that there are 32 bits that are going to be stored in this, and that's going to allow for more precision in the placement of things. So we need, just need to say enemy dot position equals CG point, and then open, open bracket or open parentheses, and this will be X, Y. Our X value will be equal to our spawn point randomly chosen. So in order to do this, you just say CG float so CG float, open parentheses, and this is going to be random, or arc, sorry, arc for random underscore uniform. And this is going to be our UIN32 that we just created right up here. So, and then, so just type in spawn point, like so. And then our Y value will be equal to our self dot size dot height. So now if we were to, we can't build and run this chest yet because we need to add this enemy to, onto our scene. In order to do this, you just say self.addChild and this is going to be our enemy that we just created. So we're adding this child onto our scene. So now we want to go into our did move to view and spawn our enemy that we just created. So in order to do this, we basically do exactly what we did with the bullets by just saying var, and this will be our enemy timer is equal to our ns timer dot scheduled timer I spelled timer wrong that's why it's not coming up dot scheduled timer with time interval and make sure it's the tar target selector user info and repeats our time interval I'm just going to make this every one second our target will be equal to self so we're going to send our timer over to our uh, game scene dot swift and then our selector will be, again, our selector. Just type that in. Open parentheses, close parentheses, open quotation mark, close quotation mark. Take the name of this, copy and paste that in, and this will be our spawn enemies. So now we're going to spawn our function, or call this function every one second. User info, nil, we don't want anything. And the repeat equals true. So now if we were to build and run this, we would have our enemies spawning at different places along the top. Now, as you can see, they're not moving. This is the exact problem that we did with our bullets. So we need to go down here to our spawn enemies. 
and we need to create some actions. So we say let action equals, and our action will be equal to an sk action dot move to y, and our y value will be equal to negative 30, as we want it to just go, want it to just go right out of the scene, and our duration will be pretty slow. We're gonna make it three seconds. And now we're gonna add the action, this action onto our enemy. So we just say enemy dot run action, and this is going to be sk action dot repeat action forever, and we're going to repeat this action that we created, like so. And now we're going to build and run, and now we should see our enemy just coming down on us. So now as you can see, we have our enemies and they're coming down on us. Now of course the bullets aren't working, that will be done in part two of this video tutorial series, but as you will see, we have our player coming down. They're coming at a quite slow rate and they would, that is perfect. Now I, I am seeing that this is spot piling up down here, so we're getting more and more nodes every second. We don't want that because that reduces frame rate. So go down here and we want to just increase this move to Y just to 70 to say. So we can build and run this again and as you will see we have our player moving down the scene like so. And easy racing every time if you watch the nodes. And now if you want to change the duration at which our enemies come down you can just or how fast the enemies come down you can go to this action and we can change the duration to just a two seconds and that'll make it come down a bit faster like so. So that's going to make it come down a bit faster and make it a bit harder. And if you want, you can also go up here to your spawn bullets. And also if you want to spawn more enemies, you can always come up here to your enemy timer and we can change this to up to a 0 0.5 and we'll, we can spawn our bullets a bit faster as well by just changing those time intervals. So we can build and run those, like so. And now we have those bullets all running. And now if you want to speed up the bullets, you can also just set the duration of our action right here to a zero. So in 0 0.5 seconds, we want our bullets to hit up there, hit the top of the scene. We can do so. There you have it. That is very fast, but you might like that. You might have a fast paced type of game. Anyway, that is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you want to, if you want to help support this channel even further, you can head over to patreon.com slash architap, and you can get some sweet perks out of this as well, such as telling me what to do for a tutorial. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hey everybody.